Check this out. I got a 2016 Super Duty here. Customer says the battery goes dead after sitting about a week, and he's already replaced the battery a couple times. It keeps having this problem. Um, and so I got here yesterday, and I'm testing the amperage draw, and with the meter set on max, these are the readings I was getting, but most of the time, 99% of the time, it was only sitting at 13 milliamps, so there was no abnormal parasitic draw, but like I said, the meter was set on max, and these are the time intervals, these are the amperages that were drawn. Come 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, we did have a very large, over 2 amp draw, but it was only for a very brief second, only to set the meter, and uh, by the time I got here, it was already back down to 13 milliamps. So today's Friday, it came in at 9 in the morning, and it was sitting at 13 milliamps. 3 o'clock rolls around, and we have another 2.6 amp draw, but it was only for 2 seconds long, and then it went off. It, this happened one more time today, so throughout the whole day today, it had only about a 4 second period of a very high power draw. And no, the battery's not dead. Like I said, it, it takes a week, sometimes even more to die. The customer said, I don't care how much money it's going to cost, let's fix this thing. Um, so during the testing today, I had my lab scope hooked up to all three uh, communication networks. It has a high speed can, a medium speed can, and there's one other communication network. I wanted to see which one was waking up first, and let me show you what I found. Okay, so now it's almost 3.40 p.m. sitting almost all day long. We finally had a power draw come in, and you can see the first uh, CAN bus that talked was the channel 4, that green one which is the red wire. The red wire goes to pin 11 of the breakout box, which is the CAN bus medium speed low. Also, you can see here, channel 4, that medium speed CAN, it turned on first, and the modules are communicating. As soon as that CAN bus goes down, then the other ones start shutting down as well. So after checking out the communication network for this truck, I've narrowed it down to these seven modules. All these modules are on the medium speed CAN network and they all have power all the time. And then I checked out which fuses supplied power to these modules and found that there are seven fuses that supply power to these seven modules. So I went ahead and ordered six of the low current probes from AES Wave and I got enough fuse taps uh, to be able to add to my current collection to be able to monitor the amperage draw on all seven fuses at the same time with this eight channel hand tech uh, lab scope. Yes, it's very cheap, but uh, it should get the job done as I don't need something that's really fast. And the plan is to have those amp clamps on each of the seven fuses supplying uh, power to these modules and wait until I get a power draw. When that happens, I should be able to zoom in on the scope and see which amp clamp picked up current first. And hopefully that will lead me to the module that's causing uh, all of the other modules to wake up. So uh, wish me luck and I'll keep you updated. Well, the new scope showed up. I've already done the parasitic power draw test with it, so I've already disconnected it but I did want to show you how I how I have it hooked up into the system so we got a whole bunch of these what they call fuse amp loops replacing the fuses in the uh, this is the battery junction box and a whole bunch of amp clamps so I got four amp clamps here monitoring four uh, individual circuits and then at the body control module we have three more amp clamps And then I had one more amp clamp. This was just wrapped around the wire that I had going to my multimeter. So I had eight amp clamps total, and here are the results. So here we had a parasitic draw come in uh, shortly after doing the test. Blue trace, which is channel five, that came on first. Um, and actually, this purple trace, which is channel seven, also came on at the same time shortly after these other channels came on. So here's a closer look at the waveforms. This pink trace is measuring complete uh, amperage going from the battery. And as you can see, the purple trace is the one that turned on first, followed by the blue, followed by the yellow. So channel seven is this amp clamp, which is hooked up to that fuse over there which is the fuse 24 for the tire pressure monitor.
So based off of that first set of current waveforms, we can assume that the tire pressure monitor is what's causing the draw. However, I re-ran the test, I forgot to save it, but in the next test, all of the current waveforms increased in current at the exact same time. So I wasn't sure exactly which module was waking up first. We're talking messages on this bus are flying at thousands of times a second. So I wanted to be a little bit more certain as to which module was putting the very first message onto the bus. So that's why I invested in another tool that's actually pretty darn cool. This is a PCAN USB adapter. It's made by Peak. But what this does is it translates all of the messages on the CAN bus and it'll do medium speed CAN, high speed CAN. It'll pretty much do any CAN that you want as far as I know. So let's see how this thing works. I got the CAN bus USB interface in between my laptop and the breakout box. I'm tied into the medium speed CAN bus. Now they do sell different adapters to go on this interface. They sell an adapter that plugs right into the OBD2 port or you can get the one that I got. Uh, it's a little bit more universal in my opinion. Uh, it's got banana jacks. Now you can hook it up to whatever you want. And let's go ahead and run this thing. So when I said it translates the messages on the bus, I guess that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but what it does do, what I'm concerned with is the module ID. So I just put the key in the, in the ignition. We see all these different IDs pop up and that's going to be the identifier for the module that sent the message. And the cool thing about this software is you can run what they call a trace here. So that's going to record all of the messages on the bus in a chronological order. So we're going to be wanting to see the first message that's being transmitted. We want to see the ID for that module. I'm going to go ahead and clear this and watch how fast these messages pop up. I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on. Turn the key off. Look at the messages. We're at 700 messages right now. I'm going to go ahead and, and stop this. But let's say I was doing a parasitic draw test and that just happened. I'm going to scroll all the way up here. And we would look at the ID for that module. And that's going to be the module that woke the bus up. So that's the plan. I'm going to go ahead and let this thing sit overnight. And we're going to see what happens. Okay, so after letting the truck sit all night long, we had the bus wake up eight different times. And each time, it was the same set of messages. And the very first message was transmitted with this module identifier, 53BH. Now, I did have it saved, uh, or I did have it on the trace, and I saved that file. But I don't know how to reload those files to view on this software. It's much easier to view it on this software, in my opinion. Um, but I'm just not sure how to do that. If you click here to open your file, for whatever reason, it will not load. So I have to open it in another software um, called uh, Visual Studio Code. And anyways, on this software, the ID has changed. It's no longer a 53BH. It is just a 53B. They've cut the H off, but it's the same thing. And so here we have our timestamp. Instead of seconds, this software puts it in milliseconds. And so there's the very first message that, that came up, and that's the module identifier. And if we scroll down, Look at our timestamps. So we have a massive difference in time. So the bus went to sleep right here. Between the first message and this last message, that is a seven second interval. So the bus was woken up for seven seconds and finally went back to sleep. Then it sat for 3.76 hours, uh, according to my calculations from the other, the other software, looking at its, at, at, at its timestamps. Uh, and the same exact module woke it back up. We have a 5-3 boy. And we're going to scroll down the list here. Okay, again, we see the bus went to sleep. We had a very big change in time. Same module is the module that's submitting the first message on the bus. We can keep going down this list. And uh, here we go. We go from 23 to 37. Same module. I've written it all down here. These are the time in seconds, not milliseconds, but seconds from the first software. And these are the time intervals. Now some vehicles will wake up 
uh, during the rest phase to do evap leak system testing and such. Um, but I would imagine if that was the case, you would have a, uh, a consistent time base between when the modules would wake up. But as you can see, we have any, a, a huge range. We have three hours, 45 minutes between the bus activity here and just a little over an hour at this point. So it's very inconsistent in when the bus is waking up and then the power draw being uh, as high as 2.8 amps. That's just a lot of, of current. I just don't see that as being normal. So now that I knew the ID of the module that's waking up the bus is 53BH, I need to figure out which module that ID belongs to. And so what you do is you start pulling your fuses for your modules and then turning the key on and seeing if this ID no longer shows up. If, the, if you pull a fuse for, say, the uh, body control module and turn the key on and the uh, ID goes away, well, then that would mean that, well, it's the body control module um, is responsible for that ID, I mean, in most situations. So I started pulling fuses, and when I pulled fuse 24 which supplies power to the tire pressure module, the ID disappeared. So I looked at what all uh, Fuse, 24 pa uh, Fuse 24 powers, and it powers the um, this module on the steering wheel. I think that, yeah, it's a steering column control module. Um, it, of course, goes to the tire pressure module, which on this one is located above the headliner over here and it goes to a relay and then there's something else it goes to but the only two modules that it powered was the uh the steering column control module and the tire pressure module after unplugging the steering column control module the id was still on the network so then i unplugged the tire pressure module and the id went away so let me show you so here i have the key on and i'm looking at the id 53 bh and we can see our message count continues to climb now I'm going to unplug the tire pressure module with the tire pressure module completely unplugged. See how the message count no longer climbs. So that confirms that the tire pressure module is the module responsible for waking the bus up. Now that does not guarantee that the module is the problem. But what I'm going to do is, uh, well, actually, this thing was cheap enough. Um, we went ahead and just bought one and uh, put a new one in here. And I'm going to repeat the test over uh, the weekend. And I'm going to have this uh, software hooked up to the bus. And we're going to see if any, any messages are transmitted if the bus wakes up. And I'm going to be monitoring the uh, amperage of the parasitic draw. And uh, hopefully a new one of these uh, fixes the problem and we no longer have any activity on the bus and we no longer have any, um, you know, two and a half amp power draws. So I'll keep you updated. So I have restarted the parasitic power draw test with the new tire pressure module. It's 12.53 a.m. on Saturday. In just 10 minutes, the uh, power draw dropped down to 48 milliamps. Now, most of that current is due to the uh, breakout box being installed because it's got LED lights and stuff. So that's this little box here. That's what's drawing most of your current. And we have the uh, CAN bus uh, interface running. So we are recording right now. I'm going to come back a day or two later and see what's going on. Well, I'm back. It is 6 p.m. on Saturday, so it's been approximately um, 17 hours doing the test. We had our meter hooked up. Nothing has changed. We're still pulling almost 2.8 amps. If we look at the average amp draw, it's only 54 milliamps, so that's not enough to drain the battery. Um, but I don't know if maybe at some point... Um, that you know after sitting a week because the customer has to let this thing sit for a week or more before the battery goes dead so maybe after sitting for for a really long time the, the power draw increases i'm not sure uh the, the longest i've let it uh, sit with the uh, power draw on there has been um i, th I think about 24 hours or so uh, and when we go back over to the laptop we have the same exact module the tire pressure module it's waking it up so 53 bh uh, you can see we had uh, 3,000 messages in that time period. 
So now that the new module did not fix the problem, I went ahead and just unplugged the module. And now we are redoing the uh, power draw test. And uh, this time I not only have the PCAN running to monitor CAN bus messages, but I've also got the uh, PicoScope hooked up to it. So we're monitoring battery voltage. Uh, this is monitoring voltage drop across a resistor. This is a the Jarhead Diagnostics uh, parasitic power draw box. But basically that's got a two ohm resistor in there. And so we got the PicoScope measuring the voltage drop across the resistor. And the PicoScope does its math channel thing and determines amperage across the, um, the resistor using Ohm's law. So it's a very accurate way to monitor amp draw over a long period of time using a lab scope versus using an amp clamp, which likes to drift. And so I got the uh, time scale set on 1,000 seconds per division. So I can take uh, about a seven-day recording with that, uh, with that time scale. Um, and, of course, you got the uh, multimeter here running until the battery runs out and I got this set on max so uh, we have two different uh, tools monitoring amp draw and I'm hoping that we will not have any more spikes with the module unplugged um, if we do well then we know for sure it's something else and it's not the uh, tire pressure module well it's now 9 p.m. Sunday I came back and with the TPS module unplugged we have no messages on the bus we look at our meter the max current draw um, is 158 milliamps, way lower than the over 2 amps it used to have. Our average is 48 milliamps. Now granted we have a breakout box on there. If you were to unplug the breakout box this will drop down to 13 milliamps. Um, so that's a good sign. Um, then you go over here. I had the um, Pico scope running but unfortunately it only captured one waveform. I've already done deleted it but there was obviously no no activity picked up by the Pico scope. I found out that if you want to run a really long sample, um, I had it uh, set on the sampling rate. I had this thing set to a sample rate of 12 and a half thousand samples a second. And when you're running something that long on your buffer, apparently it doesn't have the memory. So I'm new to the Pico scope, but I assume when I set it on buffer memory and I'm only collecting 20 samples a second, that's a lot less samples, so I should have no problem um, doing a really long waveform uh, recording. Okay, so before we go on to the next part of this video, I totally forgot to mention that this tire pressure module is also the keyless entry module and the remote start module. This gray connector here is where an external antenna would plug in to extend the range of the remote start system. As you can see, this truck is equipped with remote start. Um, and of course, so if you go to unlock the doors or, or lock the doors, the key communicates with this module to, to do those functions. So that's what made me think that maybe the key was causing an issue. So now we will go to the next part of this video. So at this point, I have no idea what's going on. Um, we have unplugged the module and we no longer have activity on the bus. We no longer have a uh, power draw. Um, so apparently something's going on with that module, but the new module didn't fix it. So maybe <laughs> it's a long shot. But maybe there's something wrong with the key where it's outputting a signal, uh, you know, the key fob, because that's what communi communicates with that, uh, with that TPMS module. And uh, maybe that's causing the draw. So I'm going to re-plug in the old module and uh, clear, clear codes and all that good stuff. I'm going to hide these uh, really uh, far distance away from the truck so that way they cannot communicate with each other and uh, redo the, uh, the draw test and see if anything changes. So it's now Tuesday. So far this uh, scope has been running for uh, 34 hours. And I'm going to go through the waveform pages. This is where we uh, first hooked up the battery. As you can see, it took two and a half hours for the first parasitic draw to occur. There's page number two. We have two cases of draw. The third page is completely blank. Fourth page has three. Fifth page blank. That page one. That page one. Two. One, 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 and one. Okay, it's at this point in the diagnosis 
where I'm just about to give up because I have absolutely no idea what is causing this tire pressure module to wake up. We've already removed the keys out of the situation. I've never seen something like this before, um, but it crossed my mind. I mean, I've seen some crazy things in the automotive industry. I was thinking, well, what if a tire pressure sensor was waking up? Never heard of that before. Google, I Googled it, nothing, no results at all. Um, these tire pressure sensors have inertia switches that are supposed to close when the tires spin 25 miles an hour. Um, that powers up the sensor. I mean, they're battery powered, but that inertia switch is supposed to close before they wake up and start uh, transmitting signal for the tire pressure module to pick up. What, what happens if one of those tire pressure sensors was broken and was outputting uh, tire pressure? Would this thing even care? I mean, this thing's turned off, right? It has power all the time, don't get me wrong. I mean, it has to, because it also works for, re for remote start and keyless entry. Um, but if, if a programmed tire pressure sensor, you know, one that's calibrated to, to this receiver, was transmitting when the truck was off, would it pick it up? Or would it ignore it? Well, I decided to go ahead and remove all five tires and rerun the parasitic draw test as a last hope that maybe I might, I might see some change. So let's see what happens. Well, I can't believe it. We got all four tires removed. Now I got them moved a couple of shop buildings out of here. They're way far out of range and also uh, removed the spare tire as well. And it's been sitting now for nine hours. And we have not picked up any parasitic draw peaks. 180 uh, milliamps was the max. And if we look at our CAN bus message log, there's no messages. So maybe this is just pure coincidence, but as soon as I remove those tires, I didn't, I didn't change anything. Like I didn't disconnect any of this equipment. All I did is I jacked the truck up, put it on jack stands, removed the tires and got them out of here. As soon as I did that, everything went away. No more draw, no more messages. So now I'm gonna roll the tires back in. I'm gonna mount the tires one at a time and leave it sit for you know eight to 10 hours with, with each tire on here and keep putting the tires back on until hopefully we get some more messages to try to narrow down uh, which tire pressure sensor could be causing this issue. Well, I rolled the tire back in the shop. This is the passenger side rear tire. I've already unbolted it, but as soon as I bolted it onto the wheel, look at what happened. And I was very gently installing it. I didn't like impact it down or nothing. I just put it on the studs. So let's look at our waveforms here. We have no power draw. It's nice and consistent. And we're on waveform one of five. If you look at the time scale here, it is two hours and 45 minutes per page. Page two, three, four, no activity. Page five, here we have a power draw. This was the exact time that I installed the tire. So we have 13 hours of zero draw and the tires were removed and out of the shop building. I roll in that passenger side tire and install it and we immediately start having power draw issues. So when I saw we had a power draw as soon as I bolted this one wheel on the passenger side rear, I went ahead and removed it and got it out of the shop and reinstalled the other tires thinking if anything we only have one uh, one sensor that's acting up because there's absolutely no way right that there could be multiple sensor issues after very gently installing these other three tires to not disturb the inertia switch on the tire pressure sensors look at what happened as soon as i roll them in the shop and install them we have power draws but what do you notice about this power draw it's a multiple strike if you will power draw if I zoom in on the draw, you can see, and this never happened before, but I think this is what was causing the battery to die on the customer. Uh, but this is the first time it's happened, and it happened three times in a row. Look at this. The power draw comes on, and it doesn't even go all the way back off, and immediately comes back again and back on. What I think happened to the customer that caused the battery to completely die is one of these sensors completely 
got stuck in one of these cycles where it's continuously outputting some type of signal and uh, you know just keep going on off on off on off and eventually with this amount of current it's going to drain that battery pretty quickly um, and I looked at the CAN bus messages and each time that this happened it was the same messages and it was all from the uh, tire uh, pressure module it was the same exact messages we had been seeing before it just repeated uh, with with no break in between so it just like it didn't even return to rest phase until quite a quite a long ways after um so if you notice these tires are brand new i talked to the customer they're less than a year old and when they had these things changed they had all of the tire pressure sensors changed out with them and uh, this was not done at the dealer this was done at a tire shop so most likely these are an aftermarket universal style uh, tire pressure sensor so uh, my assumption is that uh, it's probably a cheap made in china sensor that is uh, malfunctioning somehow so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to disable the tpms system with uh, forescan and uh, and see if that fixes the problem if it doesn't then i'm going to have the customer uh, come get these tires and uh, have the either have the um, the sensors re removed completely altogether or replaced with oem sensors uh, that are you know a high quality sensor and and see what happens okay so now i got the four scan software hooked up to the truck First time I used this, I uh, just had to buy an adapter on Amazon. It was like $65, and uh, the software was free. You get a two-month uh, free trial. After that, it's like $12 a year, so very, very affordable. Uh, pretty simple to use. Um, just connect to the vehicle, click on the little chip here, and uh, they actually did not have the tire pressure module listed. You had to go to the body control module uh, to be able to adjust the, uh, the tire pressure mon monitor. So the tire pressure monitor right now is enabled and we're just going to disable that. And now I'm going to turn everything back off and hook everything back up and uh, redo the parasitic draw test and, and hope that the uh, draw goes away. If not, we'll have to change the sensors out. Okay, time to put it to bed. January 3rd, 10 p.m. I just connected the battery, so we did have a power spike, but now it's all going to sleep. We're at 77 milliamps. We got the scope running, and if you go down here, I have the CAN bus monitor running. The trace is cleared out, so any messages will appear here. And we will be monitoring the, uh, the amp draw and see what happens. Well, it's now Thursday, just now hit lunchtime. So we're at 14 hours of testing. I was gonna leave it on longer. Uh, however, it's really not required because by this time it would have had several uh, power draw uh, spikes. Uh, my brother needs to use this bay, so we got to get this truck out of here, which means I got to turn the key on, and it pretty much uh, is going to completely do away with my parasitic draw test. You can see it's uh, January 4th at lunchtime, so. And here you can see we're at 174 milliamps max. Average draw is 50 milliamps. Like I said, we have the breakout box on there, which is most of that draw. And when I go back over the waveforms here through the pages, page one, two, three, four, five, as you can see, there's zero draw. It's not waking up anymore. So it fixed it. Oh, and I forgot to show you, there were no messages recorded on the CAN bus during that whole time. 